because we're going to do this fun thing where Kimmy reads her own book and does all the exercises. So little story here, you know, a lot of pillow talk over the first couple of years of our relationship where, you know, Kimmy and I are talking about the four-year career and every once in a while she would say, you know, have you ever thought about when you rewrite it, you know, make it a little more engaging, lighten up a little, make it a little more fun, maybe use the color pink, you know, I don't know, something like that. And my response, of course, was, yeah, 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 I'll think about it. That's a good idea. Yeah, I'll do that. And so, I don't know, that probably two years went by and, and, and one late night she said, or maybe early morning she said, I got an idea. I'm going to write my own four-year career which she had done in like two months. And so here it is, it's been out now for two or three years. And two of years. course, a year, a year and a half. And of course, uh, as you would expect, it outsells the four year career like three to one. And why? Well, because of the color turquoise and pink and there's flowers in it and- And the content. And the content, which is everyone selling ice cream. So who doesn't want to read about that? But actually, the magic to Kimmy's book is that it's highly engaging and it asks the reader to answer some questions and take some notes and fill out some, you know, structure about, hey, what's going on with your life? What do you think about network marketing? You know, and what do you believe about it? What's going on with your finances? Who do you know? What would you do with the money? Instead of just spewing information like I did, uh, it asks a lot of great questions, highly engaging, and it's a beautiful book. And so what Kimmy's idea here is, which is I just love this, this engagement, is she went actually, and she'll show you what she did. She went in the last couple of days and reread her own book like she was a prospect, like somebody brand new. And you know who we consider prospects are not just somebody that you consider a potential business partner, a candidate that you want to talk to, but anybody on your team that's not engaged in building a team, well, this, they're still a potential candidate. Why? Because they don't get it yet. They may love the products. They may love you. They may even love the company. But if they're not thinking about who they know and they're not passing out books or inviting people to you know webinars or to look at a video or to take a look, if they're not thinking about at least getting four or five, six people on their team and making a few hundred bucks a month, they don't get it. So they're also still a candidate. And so this book is perfect for anyone that's not yet recruiting to, you know, pose the question in a profound way. Hey, what if you did? What if you did have 500 bucks a month or a thousand dollars a month? And it's not just income. What if the company paid you for the rest of your life? And how would that change your life? And so Kimmy asks those questions in a really fun and profound way. And the possibility with her book is for each one of you. You know, we, we talk to a lot of people, you know, do you have the, oh yeah, I have that book. <laughs> well, you know, that doesn't do you any good to have the book. I mean, that's step one, have the book. Step two is engage with the book such that you get something powerful out of it that you remember on a daily basis that sets you up to engage, that motivates you to engage. Because if we don't engage, we don't build. And, you know, knowledge is, is not necessarily power. It's the implementation of it. So what she did, uh, and she's going to talk to you about it. I'm going to ask her some questions. And she's going to tell you, like, what the experience was like going through the book again, which is something that we encourage every one of you to do. Even if you did it once, do it again. Take a couple hours, go through the book, and update all of your information and see if it, res it inspires you to do what Kimmy did. So first question I wanna ask you, Kimmy, is why did you, where did you get this idea? Why did you wanna reread the book? And what did you get out of the process? Okay, well, actually, as Richard was talking, I had a bunch of things I wanted to kind of interject, but I held my tongue so he could finish. Um, first and foremost, you know, he was talking about me deciding to reread it and get engaged in the, and he was talking about like who this book is good for. And what I realized is that this book is actually good for all of us as a, as a marker, as a reminder, and as a, like a, a starting point and then a reflective point. So I've actually decided that I'm going to reread and rejournal in a new book every maybe six months, maybe once a year. 
so that I have a place to go back and look at, okay, where did I start from, which is today, and then where did I end up in that period of time in between the new read and the new filling in the answer. So it was pretty um, profound for me actually to read my own book. You might think that sounds kind of crazy, but before we dive into what I discovered, um, you know, I really actually thought about doing this because I, my, my goal was to help you guys get engaged in not just reading the book, but actually doing the book. There's a big difference. There's a big difference between reading through it, skimming through it even, and sitting down and filling it out. I've never actually journaled in my own. So today I sat down and it was really only about, I think maybe a 45 minute total read and experience and it was it was pretty eye-opening for me but the reason I decided to do this with you guys is um, that I thought well how cool would it be if I could inspire you guys to do your journaling and have your discoveries especially as we're in a beginning of a new year so you could decide to do this with your team every January 1st or maybe you know I don't know you choose a date with your group and you do it and you do it again and you do it again every year in the move it, moving forward so um, so for for what for my goal to get you guys to participate we decided that we're going to actually give away an auto ship order of five of these books every month delivered to your doorstep to share with five friends for the next year. We're gonna give that away to one person, and so the way we're gonna choose who gets it is through a couple of qualifiers. Uh, first and foremost, whoever chimes in on the pages that I pull up and talk about my experience, you chime in and share your experience as well. So that's one qualifier on how we'll choose a winner. But also, by sharing, you can't share a picture while we're doing a live, so you'll have to share it after by sharing your newly drafted four-year career story on our chat thread here. We're gonna go through and read your four-year career stories and see what you create, because as you guys may or may not know, there's nothing more powerful than writing things down in, in written form. And so even before I wrote this book, even before I joined Network Marketing, I went to a personal development seminar and they had us fill out a goal sheet and I started filling out the goal sheet and it said how much money do you want to earn this year and I wrote down a number that was bigger than what I was earning currently but not a big jump it was actually a, a small little oh well maybe I could do this but my gosh that's double my salary and then I scratched it out and I thought you know what heck forget that I'm gonna think big and I wrote a really big number and I have to tell you guys, there is no coincidence that in a year's time, exactly, I was actually making that exact amount of income annually in my network marketing career. And so whatever you choose to write down in your book is far more apt to happen than if you don't write it down. So that's that's one thing. But back to my experience, do you want to interject anything there, honey? Yeah. So my first question and one of the first you know pieces of the book is... Uh, I'm, I'm curious, what did you think about network marketing when you first heard about it, when the opportunity was first put in front of, in front of you? Like if you would have had this book and, and you got, went to the first chapter and it said, so what do you know and what do you believe about network marketing before you got involved, when you were first approached, what did you know about it? What did you believe about it? What I believed about it was that it wasn't something I that I did. That's what I believed about it. Something um, somebody else did. Yeah, and I and I definitely thought, well, what would people think of me if I did it? So, I I had a preconceived notion that like my type of person, which is so funny because here I was struggling, totally broke, um, but that I I was a little bit better than that. Yeah, that's pretty common, you know, that people don't see themselves uh, doing it. So the second chapter in the book is uh, like kind of helps people see well why maybe would they want to do it? And that's asking people to do a little income and expense or budget exercise on how much money do they make every month and what do they do with it and how much do they have left over and are they going in a hole or are they building a pile? So when you first, like if you were to first do this book before you got in, what would that conversation look like? I've heard this in your story 
many times. Oh but. my goodness. Like what my finances were. Yeah. I was, my finances were in the toilet. I was actually looking at moving in with my mom. And so when I went through the book this time, you guys, I actually decided, and hey, this is an invitation for you, no matter where you are in your business, I decided to, to count today as day one in my network marketing career and create a new four-year career. So that's one of the things that I got really excited about as I was doing this is like, okay, today is day one in my four-year career, and I want to see what I can create with my stats and with everything I do in the next four-year time period, not counting what I've already done. But as far as where my finances were, they sucked. Um, and what, about, what about now? What is your income now? And, and when you look at the line items, how much money do you spend now on shoes and travel and clothes and okay, so dinners true, out and no booing? Okay, so true confessions. Gifts to your friends and okay, so true, your, how okay, much drops to the okay, bottom line? <laughs> okay, so true confessions, you guys. I have to say, for me... And I'd love for you guys to chime in. This is one area. First of all, we need you to comment on what your belief is right now in the profession. We want to hear about that from you. Um, and then I want to hear um, how good are you at currently budgeting? Because I'm terrible at it. <laughs> so I got to be honest that on this page, let's see, where's the page? Um, it's page. I marked it specifically because I kind of had some empty spaces. Oh, yeah. Page 14, if you're on the fourth edition, the pages have changed. So we're, this is the fourth of most current edition. Page 14, you'll see the ice cream girls on one side talking about leverage. And on the left side, you'll see the budget. Is yours page 14 as well? 13 and 14. Okay, so yeah, well, around me, there. Let me ask some questions. So oh, no, no, how no. How much income do you make now? What is your bring home income now a month? Well, you don't know. We're not going to talk about that. Oh, how so, much money is in your bank account right now? So, I don't know. She but hey, know. here's the deal. <laughs> okay, he's kind of throwing me under the bus here. The great news is that we... Uh, Wait, let me ask one more question. So, I have a philosophy of abundance. <laughs> how, much, and how much of your money is disposable income that you can spend on anything you want? As much as I want. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> yeah, all of it, whenever I want. That's what's so incredible about this profession is you get to create your, your life and your level of financial comfort, which we have done. And I've done a great job of that. So I can spend when I want, where I want, with who I want. How much money do you have but, left at the end okay, of the month? Okay, shush. He's ruining this. So anyways, you guys, my point about sharing, the hardest part of this book for me, filling it out today, which cast a huge awareness for me, even though we have monthly reporting and um, all of my expenses are listed and we're supposed to get on a call once a month with our gal and go through them. I'm always too busy. So I don't ever go through our reports. Although I do have it all spelled out, I don't really know. And that's really actually not okay with me. So that was another big discovery as I did the book today. Like, holy cow, I really need to get really tapped back into what I'm spending, what I'm earning, how much I have left in the bank, and um, so that I can feel even better about where I am financially versus totally being clueless. So I'm gonna encourage you guys to, you know, it takes literally two seconds to do this, but wow, what a flashlight that was shined here on the book for me. So the next piece of the book is about uh, thinking about building a team and who do you know, and I'm curious as you did it again, <laughs> So you do, you know, you're always inviting people to take a look, always recruiting. And you have been now for what, eight years? Yeah. But I didn't ask you this ahead of time, but I'll bet you came up with four people. I did. That you haven't talked to yet. I did. Who are they? Well, they might be watching. So if you are, you'll be <laughs> greatly flattered that I have your name here. Well, it says think of four besties. And here's the cool thing, you guys, is that like Richard said, you you know, a lot of times people think I've already talked to everybody I know. Well, you meet new people all the time, but I have four names here, two of whom I've known my entire life who are not in my business, who I would love to work with. You'd love to work with them. Yeah, yeah. and they would love to work with me. And, um, you know, so th they're, those are two awesome bestie names. And then right. I have, I, I, you're going to make me say them? Well, it's a great way to invite them. All to right, so I've got <laughs> Sheila and Jennifer. Sheila, <laughs> you're right over here on Maui. Sheila's on Maui. Jennifer's in Houston. And Come then, on, Jennifer. And then 
I've got two friends who are my really great friends who I've met more recently, Meg, who lives in Seattle, and Kristen, who also lives in the Seattle area. And they're both, all of these guys are just rock stars in their lives. And um, they're just like really close and dear to my heart. And we would have a ton of fun building this business together. So they're my four besties I put down. What if they say no? Then that's okay. I'll move right on to my next four besties. <laughs> Because you know what? The likelihood is that they probably will say no, and that's totally great. I don't care if they say no, but I, that what this book today for me, what this did, and I'll tell you a couple more pages. So, actually, before we move on, you guys, who are your four besties that you put down or four friends that you put down on page? For me, it's page 20. Is it different for you? Yeah. Yeah. So, around page 20, it asks you to write four names down. So, what happens when you get four besties, whether they're the first four or last four or one every 40 that you talk to, what happens when you get four besties who also get four best besties who get four besties who get four besties? You get lots of besties growing a team with you and you get compounding, you get geometric progressions. And so you guys may wonder why I chose ice cream. I don't even know. I don't think you know this about me, honey. I probably do There's know. a lot Richard doesn't know about I'm me. I'm not curious at all. I've never asked. Yeah. <laughs> um, I worked in an ice cream store when I was in high school. Are you certified as an ice cream? I am a certified ice creamologist. Uh-huh. Yeah. I did miss that. Yeah. I forgot to ask. Yeah. Have you ever been certified in serving ice cream? Yeah. So I'm a professional ice cream server. Ask me anything. But mine were like Copenhagen cones. Was They're from Copenhagen. So that's even more special. More special. <laughs> okay. So, but you guys, so on this chapter, which is, um, I think it's chapter two. Let me just make sure it doesn't move into chapter three. On chapter two, oh, chapter three, oh, the possibilities. One of the things that stuck out for me today as a business builder who's been building for eight years. So, you know, again, Richard started off, who's this book for? This book is for anyone, no matter what level you are in your career. I got to tell you guys, I had some big aha moments today. One of the things I really started thinking about here in chapter three was um, what, like the pace, pace of play and what you can be leaving on the table by not being consistent. And so let's say you're doing this part, part, part time. And so you treat it part, part, part time, actually you treat it less than part, part time. You treat it some, some, some time. So you do it when you feel like it. So maybe you talk to one bestie instead of four and maybe you have one join you instead of four. The ramifications of what that means for you as you're launching your business and the ramifications of the compounding a penny every day versus a penny every other day or every five days. Will you talk about that a little bit because you really speak to that beautifully? <clears throat> yeah, so sure. So pace of play is so important <clears throat> to get momentum, to create the momentum. And of course you can set yourself up to try to do it too quickly where you know, you're just churning through people and you're not connecting and you're not supporting people. and you're trying to do something that your team can't do. So you need a pace of play that you can do and a pace of play that your team can do. And so, you know, when we interview people that are like in the process and they're working on it and they haven't yet got momentum and we actually ask them, okay, what is your pace of play? How many people have you enrolled? How many of your besties have you got involved in the business? Cause they're not all gonna do it obviously. And generally the pace of play for people that are doing it but not doing it fast enough is about one bestie a month. One person a month they find to join their team personally. And the pace of play that we have found is required to get momentum, to get your, your plane lifted off the runway, to get your car over the hill, is three or four a month. And so, you know, it's all about consistency. It's not, a, it's not like a sprint, it's just a consistency. So if you need to enroll three or four people a month, you. You probably need to have, you know, eight or 10 presentations a month. You probably need to talk to 20, 30, 40 people a month. It's as simple as that. But here's some interesting numbers to look at. If you take a penny and double it every day, let's call that consistency. That would be like inviting one person a day every day to look at your business. If you take a penny and double it every day for 30 days, it's over $5 million. <clears throat> But here's a question, like this is a question to ask your team. Here's one of the ways you know whether your team really understands the income opportunity 
asset income, the four-year career. They understand that as well as they understand their product line, which most people don't, is the question, if you double that penny every other day, and what that equates to is if you invite somebody to take a look at your opportunity every other day, or if you enroll somebody every other week instead of every week or every other month, what's that penny worth after 15 days if you just did it every other day? Instead of $5 million, it's worth $163. That's the, that is the impact. Say that number again, because that's profound. $163 versus $5 million. And most people would think, well, if you double it every other day, it's only worth half. No, it's not, because they don't understand compounding. Compounding, according to Einstein, is the eighth wonder of the world. It's how the rich get richer. It's also how the poor get poor. And what makes network marketing such a powerful opportunity is compounding applied to recruiting. Compounding applied to team building, where you get four besties, and if they each get four besties, you have now 16 new besties. You got four times as many people on your team, and all you've done is inspire them to do just what you did. And so by compounding, that's how you get pen a penny to five million. It's not, you know, it's not doubling the penny every day. It's not one cents, two cents, four cents like that. It's compounding every day throughout the 30 days. That's how you get five million. But if you just do it every other day, you, I mean, you don't miss half, you miss 99% of the wealth building. So pace of play is huge. And you, you just gotta, you gotta ask yourself, is that extra thousand a month? Is that extra 2,500? Is that extra $5,000 a month for the rest of your life? That's asset income, it's not linear income. You know, I know an extra thousand dollars a month in linear income is not doing the work well, you might as well just, you know, be a salesperson, sell a product or work at Walmart. But the question to ask is, is building something for three or four years that pays you $1,000 a month for the rest of your life, is that worth the pace of play? And, you know, that extra money, it's not only wealth building in itself, but it allows you in, to invest in wealth building. So do you know what happens if you invest a thousand dollars a month at you know say a five percent return do you know what you have in like 12 or 13 or 14 15 years you have over a million dollars cash and you still get the thousand dollars a month coming in but then that million dollars is paying you three or four thousand dollars a month this is how you get wealth building and the reason this book can work with people is people want freedom, they want abundance, they want shoes, they want to travel, they want to give gifts, they don't want to worry about money anymore, but they don't have the they don't even have the extra money to invest. So pace of play is makes it all happen. You the choice is five million or 163. Your choice. Your choice. So write in the comments, you guys, which, how is your pace of play right now? And can you step up your pace of play and commit to yourself to being consistent every day uh, to get to the $5 million versus the $163? So I would love to talk about this chapter because this okay. was big for me. Yep. But one last question that yeah. I want to get into compounding. Sure. So after four years, so you started by having lunch with one of your besties. Yep. Just somebody that you could say, hey, will you, can you come? I want to show you something. Will you come have lunch with me? She did that every day for 90 days uh, while she was working a full-time job. And then she went full-time just because, you know, she was making more than her full-time job, which wasn't a high bar. It was a couple thousand dollars a month. So after 90 days of inviting one person a, uh, a day to have lunch, she's already exceeded her full-time income. So she took a big leap and went full-time. But where were you in terms of compounding after four years? How many people on your team? After four years, my team compounded to about 20,000 people in, in my a, organization. In how many countries? In 12 countries. All over the world. See, that's that's how this works, but you got to have the pace of play up front. So that's, that, what, that's one of the things that's really amazing, you guys, is it's not who you know, right? So if you have a friend who lives in Colorado, who has a friend who lives in Australia, if your company's open in Australia, uh, you know, like it just starts to go all over. It spreads. It can't help but spread. And that's the beauty that you don't really realize when you're just talking to your first four besties.
It's like rabbits. Oh, Lordy, or lily ponds, <laughs> lily pads. Lily ponds. Lily ponds. <laughs> So it's not just about money. One of the things that, that I know inspires Kimmy is, you know, she has a huge heart to help people. So uh, tell us about PCI. Like, what has this, what is the book? Well, you, I wanted to talk about this chapter. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Talk about, what is that chapter? <laughs> We're still going through my discoveries. Oh. He's trying to wrap it up here. <laughs> okay, so chapter six, you guys. How many of you, as women maybe feel a little like I used to feel like I don't really have any great skills. I don't have anything special. I have to tell you, even as I was reading today on chapter six, I am Superwoman, hear me roar. And I started thinking about all the things that I've done and all the teams I've been on and all the stuff I've done for my daughter. And all of a sudden, even for me, because remember, I'm in the business now about nine years actually, as I was writing all this stuff down, more and more people came to my mind who I've never shared my business with. So for you who are brand new, what it can do is just let you know of what your talents are and that those talents, while well, you might have been a, a PTA mom, you never think that's applicable here in network marketing, but yet you've organized a giant fundraiser for all of the school and had, you know, like, all of those skills come into play in network marketing. And so you get to sit here and celebrate yourself and champion yourself and say, wow, that time I flunked out of college and I then went here, 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 that actually is a victory and a win for me. So this chapter I love because it really had me today feeling awesome, feeling fabulous, and, um, and just remembering a whole bunch of more people that I can reach out and talk to. So I want you guys to list right now as we're here live with you some of your skills. Go ahead and chime in around the things you wrote down here that um, make you feel good about yourself and that you've accomplished. And then did you do your little uh, champion here? Like I have a little positive affirmation in the book, honey. I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. No, oh. it's I am superwoman, hear me roar. I have talents and skills to rock this thing. I am superwoman, hear me roar. I am totally awesome. I am superwoman, hear me roar. I can do anything I choose to do. That so, doesn't run. It's not supposed to rhyme. No. You're looking in the mirror and you're saying that to yourself and you feel really good. It's okay, so how many of you guys did that? How many of you did that? Chime in here if you did that. Okay, so I think that those were really like for me um, as far as the fill in the blanks. Well, um, I, oh, actually, I had another one too. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Circle what's true for you. As far as how much time you can put into your business in a day. Yeah, well, I'll spin you up for this. So, okay. you, like, this comes off of, like, Kimmy, what, what Kimmy was just talking about. So, too often we get in the habit of minimizing our talents and our skills and our gifts. And we talk about how worried we are and, you know, that nobody pays attention to us and we're afraid of this. But it doesn't take very much coaching, which the book does in this chapter that Kimmy was just talking about to call out your strengths and your gifts. Like if we ask you, you know, what are some of the great things you've done in your life? When have you won? When have you been powerful? We, we can step into that power with some, with some vision and some guidance and some coaching, which the book does. But if you're, if you're a mom or you're a wife or you're a husband, you have the skills to build a network because you've had to step up and you've had to do things that were perhaps uncomfortable for you and you've led and you've been powerful and you've communicated and you've influenced people and you've taken care of people and you've, you've coached people. Baby. You birthed a baby, yeah. yeah. Anyone who can birth a baby can build this business. I don't understand <laughs> that analogy, but I, okay. So, um, but okay. so now what about time? So do you have time to do it? So this next chapter chapter really addresses that for people like, you know, if, if you have 30 minutes a day, if you, Kimmy built her whole business, like got out of her full time job just by not finding an extra hour a month, but reutilizing an extra hour a month instead of a day. sitting, a day. having every day, having lunch by herself or lunch at her desk. She just spent seven bucks and had lunch at a Thai restaurant with someone same hour just repurposed so you want to talk about that like well, yeah for me what i realized in my day is it's really easy to get caught up in the uh 
pieces of management and, you know, championing the team and posting things on our secret Facebook group to help coach. And I realized, my goodness, if I reallocated some of my time in my day right now, because I'm starting my four year career all over today, um, I decided I could easily put an extra two hours into my day where I'm actually talking to new people for my business. And if I even just did that for 30 minutes, my business in the next four years would be phenomenal and so I've committed to doing an extra two hours a day for me talking to people about taking a look at what I'm doing so I want to invite you guys to go in and chime in right here on the thread how much time are you willing to commit how much time can you look at like hey I'm driving my kids from school to um, sports and in that time I can be on the phone with people like how much time can you pull out of your day for the core necessities of this business which is really inviting people to take a look at what you're doing yeah you want to keep the main thing the main thing you've probably heard that cliche you maybe you've read the book um the one thing like figure out what is the one thing that if you do that one thing every day and you do it consistently like doubling the penny every day the, the cascading results come from it and the one thing in network marketing is inviting people to take a look if you don't do that every day, if you if you procrastinate it, if you're chasing your tail, if you're on Facebook, not that Facebook is totally unproductive as long as you're inviting one person a day. Because here we are. On Facebook. Yeah. And you invited four <laughs> people who you hope are watching. <laughs> Actually, I hope they're not watching. I'd rather have that conversation with them privately. Right. So <laughs> if you just find out what is the one thing and keep the main thing the main thing, and dedicate, you know, one of the one of the techniques we teach is the power hour. So, like, it's it it doesn't really serve you to say, oh, okay, I'm going to dedicate an hour a day to doing that. You actually have to figure out when that hour is, like, what time of the day. And you got to communicate with your family. You got to clear the decks, you know, husband, kids, friends, other things that might, you know, crumble in on that hour. You got to build a wall around it. You got to protect that hour. You got to make it the most important thing that you do every day. You got to make it as important as, you know, cooking dinner for your family and protect it, fight for it, and then get in that hour and get make that your sanctuary and make the one thing the one thing and make it happen. Double that penny every day. And, you know, you guys, the thought about that is like, think about how easy it is to plop down on the couch and watch a movie, which is an hour and a half, two hours, right? And we don't even think for a second that we're sacrificing our time. So imagine if you just redirected that movie time or your, um, you know, whatever it is, the areas where you can shave off a little bit and redirect here for an hour and a half a day to build a four-year career. Imagine that, like the payoff is so phenomenal, but because we lose our focus pretty quickly in this day and age, sometimes we can't see that far ahead. So um, yeah, I just encourage you guys, you know, as you roll in, it's a new year, right? You get to press reset all the time. So what's your reset today? How much time are you willing to commit? So let's talk about a couple other things like the payoffs to doing the work. What happens after three or four years? What kind of life do you get to live? So. One of the things Kimmy gets to do as a result of her four-year career and as a result of you all buying these books is support kids that need support. And she has donated a ton of money to an organization called PS PCI that supports kids all over the world that are disenfranchised. Yeah, so the program is run through PCI. It's called Women Empowered. Um, and so we actually, went, so just by you guys, you know, reading this book today, journaling in it, being here, you actually helped to support a woman who in turn will support their kids. Um, but a woman's life around the world who's not as fortunate as we are, you know, she doesn't have an iPhone. She doesn't have a comfy house to sit on the hot couch and just hang out and chit chat on Facebook. She's out there just trying to make ends meet and doesn't have any background in entrepreneurship. And so this 18 month program that these women get put through because of the, the funds that are coming from the book, she gets to go through a, a women's empowerment program for 18 months, become her own entrepreneur, um, learn how to take out a micro loan. And so it's not like we're uh, giving her a fish, we're actually teaching her how to fish and teaching her how to live a sustainable life. And then the cool thing about this program is she then becomes a part of the teaching cycle. So once she goes through the program, part of the commitment is that she will then give back and also teach the next level of women who come through 
through this same program. So you actually are, are contributing to all these amazing women who are going to be able to do fabulous things with their lives where before they might not have that access. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a really big piece of my passion about what this book has to do for the world. And a shout out that we want to give is to uh, one of the top ambassadors, perhaps the top ambassador of the four year career for women throughout the industry that's not in our company. Uh, she's in a company called Yoli. She lives in Iowa, Jen Furness. Her story is featured in the four year career. You want and me to her read twin this? Sister. Oh, and Jeannie, right? And her twin sister, Jeannie. So Jen and Jeannie <clears throat> have just been such a huge support. And you know, you guys, as you read through the book, what I'd like you to do now is to write in the comments here which story resonated with you most as you read all of these women's stories. And so something for you guys to know about these stories is that um, when you're talking to a friend, you know, that like Jen and Jeannie were physical therapists. There's a couple people in here, here who were realtors. There's definitely a few single struggling moms. There's an attorney. Uh, there was a top um, uh, um, like marketer. So you guys can figure out just by these stories how to speak to a friend of yours um, and have them capture their attention. You know, Richard asked me in the beginning, what did I think about network marketing? And I got to tell you guys that really the only reason I even considered saying yes is that my sister Lisa's sister-in-law, Katie, had said yes. And she was somebody very influential, somebody I admired. And I thought, gosh, if she's doing this, I can do this. And so these stories can have that same effect for your friends as they read the book as well. Yep. And so Jen and Jeannie, thank you for your ambassadorship. You are supporting young girls all over the world with your uh, evangelical support of the four-year career and everything Bliss Business. And the next thing you get to do when you have financial freedom is you get to have parties. And so, you know, most of the time when you have a birthday party, it lasts like, you know, maybe a nice dinner or maybe a few friends come over. It lasts a couple of hours. That's kind of my kind of birthday party. You know, they, you know, people come over and you have cake and uh, then they go home. Uh, but not Kimmy, not her birthday party. Well, hey, it's not uh, just a birthday party. No, I'm not. turning 50. It's not just a birthday party. It's... <laughs> 50 days. 50 Fit and Fabulous, 50 days for 50 years. 50 days. Where are we going for 50 days? We're going around the world, and you guys can follow us. Uh, the blog is not set up yet, but it will be followkimmy.com, and you can follow us all around our travel journeys as we travel around the world. And we're actually going to do something really fun that Richard's super excited about. We're going to make it interactive where you guys can vote on things, and we have to take the majority vote and go do it. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you vote, <laughs> if we take the trampoline. Hey, no, don't. Yep. You, he can't. Never mind. You didn't hear that. I didn't hear it. Oh, wait, he skipped ahead real quick. So that's something super fun we have coming up. But more importantly, you guys, maybe the most important piece of you rereading or possibly your first read of the book is you filling out your story on the last page. So it's the last page of written before about Kimmy at the end. And it says your four year career story. So as I talked about the power of writing things down, the power of thinking about where you're going to be a year from now, two years from now, four years from now, you get to read all of these women's stories and be inspired by them if you haven't yet had your success. And then if you have had success, you can rewrite your next four years. So every single one of you, I'm going to invite you. First of all, in order to be uh, considered to win the free year subscription, you have to turn in a screenshot of your story so we can read what you wrote. But I'm gonna encourage you guys, if you haven't done that yet, to take the time, because I can't wait to go back and read this in six months and share with you guys, oh my gosh, you're not gonna believe it. Like I far surpassed my goals for the year in six months time, right? So now, as of this moment, I feel on track. I feel ready to just kick rear end. I gotta say, I started off January with this mentality of I am gonna just be a, a I, don't, I hate the word recruiting, so I will use, I'm going to be a business building maniac. Business building business maniac. Business building maniac right here. And so um, 
And you know what? Because I've set that intention, that's exactly what's happening for me. And so I want to invite you guys to set your intentions and get them written down, share your story. And then, yes, following us and voting on the things that Richard just tried to ruin and spoil, the biggest vote that's going to be first when I launch this followkimmy.com on going? February, I think, 6th. In like four days, you're going to hear all about it. So you guys are going to have to opt in to follow us and follow the blog and be participatory in this blog with us where are we going or is well, that a surprise it's kind of a surprise but we're starting off so we'll actually celebrate my true 50th in new york city that's the first place we'll be heading from honolulu yeah so and that's three days her true 50th is the 9th 10th and 11th of february it actually took her three days to be born so she covers three days for the actual birthday and we're going to do that in manhattan yeah we're going to rock Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah. And then on Valentine's Day, we're going to be eating cheese fondue in Switzerland. I'm yeah. really excited for, about that. For three days, we're going <laughs> to eat cheese fondue in Switzerland. <laughs> but it's, it's, if you notice here are the bumper stickers, and hey, if you want a sticker, maybe you raise your hand and you can get one. Um, 50 Fit and Fabulous. So, um, it's all about being fit and fabulous. It's not actually about going and eating cheese fondue for three days. So we're, the cool thing is you guys, we're going to be doing yoga and hiking and um, like pushing ourselves. Rich is going to be doing surf camp and surfing for the first time. So we are going to be living life the way life is meant to be lived. And you guys get to vote and participate and direct us and guide us along our journey. Won't that be fun? I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, you guys, we're really excited to see who gets the copy of, excuse me, the year's uh, auto ship of five books a month of the Four Year Career for Women to share every month with five friends. So make sure you fill in all the blanks as we've gone through this live so that you can qualify. We will announce the winner tomorrow, same time, same place. Love and aloha. Peace out from Hawaii. This oh, my God. This is <laughs>